Peeps, congrats on clicking on this video because that means you're probably taking the AP Chem class and the exam at the end of the year. No! This is the only video that I'm saying congrats in because AB Chem has been my favorite class so far that I've ever taken and I hope it's enjoyable for you. And that's what I'm here to help you with AP Chemistry. So like the thumbnail on the title says, I'm going to show you how to get an A in your class and a 5 on the exam, which I did in fact do for the 2023 exam. So yeah, I probably know what I'm talking about. So it's a basic set that most AP students know. And if you made it to AP Chem, you're probably familiar with these. Take notes in class, review your quizzes and other assignments, and ask for help. Help. Police. Murder. Now, these are not the only tips, but these are just ones that you should probably think of as, like, common sense for AP Chem and any other class, for that matter. I particularly emphasize the ask for help one because that's not something a lot of students do. I know a lot of students who don't even talk to their teacher unless they're called on in class. Don't do this in AP Chem. Don't be an idiot. If you're confused about anything or you need something, go talk to your teacher or a TA or intern or your peers or whatever, and this is going to help you in the long run, and it'll boost your confidence and communication skills. Speaking of your peers, though, my first real tip is to make a group chat the first day or the first week of school with as many of your peers as possible. If there's more than one AP Chem class at your school, I would strongly encourage you get students from those other periods as well, and just make a giant group chat where everyone is comfortable to ask questions questions, share resources, share concerns, grades, homework answers, that sort of thing. If Billy takes the test early, he might be able to provide some hints. These are some of the hilarious messages of my AP Chem group chat from this year. It was pretty active and it was called Living Hell, despite what it was really like. It was spectacular and everyone enjoyed the class. Nobody walked out fuming or anything. Speaking of fumes, I added too much catalyst to a reaction and it did this. It made a lot of gas. So tip number two is don't use too much catalyst. <laughs> Thankfully, this was only oxygen gas, which is not that deadly compared to other gases we made, but it certainly scared the crap out of some of my peers while we were in lab. Tip number three is going to be to buy a programmable multi-line calculator. Graphing is optional, and you don't really need to graph algebra equations in this class. There's really only one instance that I can think of, and that's going to be Beer's Law, and you're going to have graphs that look like this and equations that look like this, and you're going to have to use data. You're probably going to have a lab with this, but it's not that prominent on the AP exam. The other way I would see you using the graphing features with acid base equilibrium, and that's not even going to be like a graphable problem. You're just going to be doing some math and you're going to be ending up with a quadratic equation and you're going to have to find the intercepts for that equation using reaction data and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And instead of using the quadratic formula, you would go to your graphing feature and graph it. Now, for the AP exam, you're not actually going to have to solve a quadratic. You can do some maneuvering, which you'll learn about later. But if you do happen to use the graphing feature for a more accurate answer, you're just going to use the more positive value. It's probably going to be the only positive value. The multi-line feature is especially useful for math problems that require multiple steps, which will occur. Programmable features are also nice. I used a TI-84, by the way, if anyone's wondering, and that is a programmable calculator. Mine is also a really old model. But you can find program formulas not on the reference sheet and put them into your calculator, like percent ionization and percent by mass. You can also do unit conversions if you'd like. Make sure you do get a calculator that is approved by the College Board, which is most of them that you're probably going to use, but I will put the approved calculator list in the description below. You can also Google it. Tip number four is going to be wearing safety goggles in lab. Look at Carol. Carol never wore her safety goggles, but hey, now she doesn't need them. Next is going to be to familiar yourself with the course and exam description, also known as the CED. Now, this was one that I share across every AP video, every AP person ever, even for those classes that I haven't taken, because this document, no matter what AP you're in, is going to be the backbone to your course and the exam. It's created by the College Board, and yes, I will put the link for AP Chem in the description down below. And if something is not in this packet, it is not a part of the course, and it will not be tested on the exam. It also shares the skills that you need to know and what kind of problems you'll see on the multiple choice and the free response questions, how many of those problems that you'll see, and how many of each concept and unit. It even gives sample problems for you to see. Okay, so this is how the FRQ will be structured. You'll have your short and your long ones. And there's so much more in it that's very, very useful. For every AP exam that I've taken, I've learned the CED for each course, like the back of my hand, and it's really helped me in my studying. Plus, 
every resource College Board provides is based off of this course and exam description, this document right here. Tip number six is to show up to class because if you don't show up to class, you could miss such titration and that would be bad because titrations are the best, especially if you're like me and you got a 0% error on your AP titrations. Tip number seven, this is probably a more personal one to me because this is something that I kind of did and I didn't really see a lot of other people do. But whenever we did lecture days, which is about two to three days a unit, I would go home that night, each night that we had a lecture, and write my own notes in a separate notebook that was just made for my own notes. And I would use information off of the AP Daily videos and the concepts from the CED, which I just mentioned earlier. AP Daily and AP Classroom for AP Chem, unlike other AP courses <laughs> world, is actually really, 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 really good. And I really liked the videos for AP Chem. They're really informative. They have a lot of practice problems. They're not slow at all. They're actually kind of the perfect pace and they cover the concepts in a not depth. They're not too shallow and not too deep. And I wouldn't even touch the homework or any external practice problems for that matter until I finish my own notes for the unit. Tip number eight, you got a textbook, don't open it. It's full of garbage. Now I'm serious. You don't need a book or to use a book for AP Chemistry. I bought Barron's for review and I touched it once for one unit and I did a terrible job at explaining the concepts and it wasn't applicable to the course and my tests that I had to take and it was definitely not applicable to the kind of problems you see on the AP exam. So I wouldn't bother wasting 20 to $30 on a review book. Most schools do provide a textbook. Um, here's some on the screen that you're probably going to see you probably have one of them but these are the common ones and they contain a lot of jargon and if you don't need to know a lot of stuff why would you read it and it's very hard to learn chemistry by reading it as well so it's really 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 hard to master if you can by reading your textbook i did not use my textbook the entire year and i ended up with 100 in the class i was the only one in my class to have a hundred tip number nine is when you're doing your pre-lab your lab or your post-lab ask for help if you need it if you can't do the pre-lab, the lab will be very, very hard. If you don't understand the lab, you're not going to understand the post-lab. If you can't do the post-lab, you can't do the conclusion, and you're going to fail the lab. Ask the teacher to check over your pre-lab problems, go in early or during lunch or stay after, and ask for any clarifications, or just check your sig figs because those can be easy points to lose and easy points to keep. The day or so before you have to submit your lab, the deadline, have your lab completely done, or at least most of it done, and get your teacher to check it for error. So you're going to be given some feedback on your lab. Now, this is not going to be a foolproof check. It's not going to guarantee 100 if they say there's nothing wrong, but they can point out some obvious mistakes, like forgetting a title and a graph for your data table, or forgetting your unit, or your whole procedure if you forgot to do that whole section, and maybe if you didn't show work on a problem, or you wrote your elements in all caps, stuff like that. It's basically a way to assure that you don't do as bad on the lab as you possibly could. <laughs> C plus. Oh no, it can't be. C plus? C plus? <laughs> Tip number 10 is to don't be late for class because if you're late, you may have less time to do a titration and you may rush it and not get a 0% error like I did. What's the matter with you, boy? You too stupid. Stupid to do what your coach tells you. Tip 11, study every day, whether that's taking notes the night after you had a lecture or doing practice problems or spending time on the homework. Study every day outside of class for at least 20 minutes. It could be up to as long as you'd like. Just don't spend your whole evening studying for AP Chem. There's a lot of science behind spaced repetition that I'm not going to go into, but this guy basically said if you space out your studying and review, you're going to memorize and master your concepts a lot more efficiently. And yes, that applies to AP Chemistry as well, because you're going to master doing stoichiometry if you do it every day for a week before your test, rather than doing it three to four hours the day before your test, also known as cramming. Don't do that. You're also able to see what you know better and what you need to improve on more easily, and it gives you time to learn and master the material and possibly ask questions to your instructor. Tip number 12 is to get stoic down. Figure out stoichiometry early, because if you don't, it's going to be a long year. You will struggle in the other units, like gases and kinetics and thermodynamics and equilibrium and acids and bases and entropy and electrochemistry. So you need to to do stoic in unit conversions and sig figs and you need to be able to do them well whenever you cover these in class whether it's the first week of school or the 12th week make sure you get a very firm grasp on it when in doubt mull it out Tip 13 is make as many mole jokes as possible. You really want to drive your underpaid teacher crazy with the mole jokes. 
tip 14. The next one is going to be the top link in the description below, which is a website that has folders full of APCAM resources that I strongly encourage checking out and using throughout the year. I'll be posting more resources as the time goes on, like videos and practice tests for each unit and concepts. The next is going to be watch videos of the labs before you do them if they're very in-depth labs, like titration. This is just depending on what lab you're doing. So for titrations, you're going to want to watch a video on how they do a titration before you actually do it so you don't pour acid on yourself because that would be bad. You also don't want to get anything in your eye, like Carol over here. Some labs will just be more fun and simple, and you don't really need to watch videos on them, but if you forget to do a part of the lab or you want to see if your observations are correct, watch a video of the lab online. I guarantee you there are some out there for the experiment that you did. Next is going to be to do practice problems. Do as many as you can. Go beyond the homework. Past free response questions from previous exams are available online. You can just Google for them, and if you just Google a year like 2019 practice exam, you can find a ton of the different practice exams online that College Board made themselves. You can also just Google AP Chemistry Redox practice problems, and you'll find some online for you to use. YouTube actually has people doing AP Chem problems as well and explaining them, because a lot of people learn better from watching videos than just reading. Tip number 17, oh, we're on 17. Start reviewing for the exam, just cumulative review, by about spring break or mid to late March, depending on whichever comes first. And this gives you adequate time to see what you know well and what you don't know well. Study about five to six days a week until the exam, which is usually the first or second day of the exam season, which is a blessing and a curse, depending on who you ask. I broke up my studying by unit, so I focused on individual topics and concepts, but you can do practice exams as a whole and just do that during your studying, do lecture-based review, take new notes, whatever floats your boat. Type 18, 18, yes, 18, sleep. If you don't sleep, you could miss the end point on your titration because you're just so tired and it'll go too pink and you could get percent error above zero. All right, I think that's enough adequate tips for AP Chemistry, good luck to those taking it. You have my sympathy. If you need any AP Chem help, send me a message on Discord or leave a comment down below or something like that, and I will get back to you. Please like and subscribe. It really does help me out, and I will see you guys in another video. Adios.